We are supply chain. We are supply chain. We are supply chain. Nosotros somos supply chain. I am my supply chain group. I'm MSCG, and we're your supply chain group. Okay, we can start now. So, hello everyone. Thank you for joining MSCG's webinar on supply chain planning uh, with SAP for the process industry vertical. Uh, this is a 60 minute session with about 55 minutes of presentations and demonstrations and uh, five minutes of Q&A right at the end. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping. Please be on mute as a courtesy to your fellow participants. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them on chat and we will get uh, get to them at the end. Uh, with that, we can move to the agenda. Um, uh, we'll kick off with a brief introduction of the presenters and my supply chain group, that's MSCG. Uh, Suraj will provide an overview of the unique requirements and challenges uh, faced by the process industry. And uh, uh, Himanshu and Sandeep will demonstrate how SAP IBP and S4HANA meet these challenges. Uh, Matt will cover the latest innovations and roadmap from SAP in this space. And lastly, Suraj will wrap up with some key takeaways. Uh, your presenters today, um, we have Suraj Matre, Sandeep Monkar, and Himanshu Gar from MSCG. And from SAP, we have Matt Raymond. Suraj and Sandeep are partners at MSCG and have over 20 years of experience with a significant portion of it in the process vertical. Himanshu leads MSCG's APAC practice and is an IDP and process expert. Uh, Matt is a solution specialist in the process vertical at SAP and has uh, industry experience in the chemical space prior to this. Uh, about us, uh, MSCG is a supply chain boutique that's been in the business for the last 12 years. We have 160 plus experts across multiple geographies. Uh, we have two key uh, practices. Uh, one is planning with SAP IBP, s hana and APO, and execution practice with EWM, yard logistics and transportation management. Uh, we help customers maximize their investment through better strategy, roadmap, process optimization, implementation and support. Uh, MSCG has a lot of process uh, industry experience across milk products, pharma, chemical, energy, and many other verticals. Uh, with that, I will hand you over to Suraj for the process industry overview. Over to you, Suraj. Thank you, Samir, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm uh, Suraj Matre, and today I will be walking you through process industry overview. So when we say uh, process industry, it comprises of uh, different industries such as chemicals, pharma, paint and coatings, beverage, etc. But today for the demo purpose, I'm going to uh, focus on chemical industry. Uh, so what are the key characteristics of uh, this industry? So we have a uh, huge scale, which is uh, more than 5 trillion revenue per year. Uh, it's a continuous uh, operation because you cannot shut down the plant. It has to run 24-7. Uh, uh, the uh, it's usually commodity market with thin margins unless you are in uh, some specialty chemicals. Uh, it's a very interconnected, complex supply chain. A uh, lot of cross-country uh, movements happening, which leads to long lead times and uh, logistics issues. Uh, there is um, a lot of this is made to stock production, so storage constraints become very important. And uh, these products are uh, sold, produced, and transported in multiple units, such as the rails, trucks, tankers, barges. Uh, for solids, you have bags and boxes. For liquids, you have drums, ISOs, totes, etc. Uh, so today, I'm going to take this uh, uh, example of uh, uh, the chemical complex to highlight uh, the, the, some of the challenges. So this is like a plastic uh, uh, unit, and uh, you have the procurement side where you where you uh, buy uh, ethane, propane, naphtha, uh, catalyst, uh, additives, etc. That goes into those are uh, so the raw material is cracked to get uh, intermediates such as ethylene, propylene. Um, they are then polymerized to get resins for like polyethylene, polypropylene, PVC, etc. Those are usually sold to uh, other manufacturers, which then convert them to um, this uh, end products, uh, which are sold to the uh, end customers. 
So what are typical challenges we see here? Uh, from procurement side, uh, you can have allocations where you, if you are limited on uh, raw material supply, you want to allocate it to uh, high margin products. You can have long lead times. Uh, there are contracts uh, and they stipulate things such as what's the minimum that you have to buy, what's the maximum you can buy, uh, the prices, etc. When we come to the production side, uh, you have uh, all the distribution challenges. Uh, you have to do minimum utilization uh, because you can't shut down the plant. Uh, you, uh, you, you do um, uh, the cost optimization. Uh, you, so you, you get into fair shares, priorities, etc. A lot of companies do swaps and exchanges uh, with other companies. Uh, there are usually co-products that makes planning difficult. Uh, the, the bombs and production rates are time phased because uh, the catalyst usually uh, degenerates. You have uh, you need to do batch, you need batch visibility and traceability. Uh, there is uh, you need to optimize your transition. So there are product wheels, campaigns, all those transition matrices, all those things going on. Uh, you need to ramp up and ramp down production depending on the demand. Uh, you need to merge orders. There is like again tank planning because of storage constraints. Subcontracting is important because a lot of uh, these products are packaged by subcontractors. Uh, load building where you decide how am I going to load my rail cart and trucks. Uh, you can have uh, same product being made on alternate reactors. When we come to the customer side, uh, you have a lot of these product sales and customer hierarchies. You can uh, sell the same product as reclass and rebrands. Um, you have uh, price formulas and markers. Uh, you, you have rebates and discounts for customers. Um, the allocations are important because many times the demand is higher than supply. So how do you allocate the supply to customers? Uh, a lot of these products can have seasonality of the demand. So summer demand is higher than winter demands. You need reports on margins, net backs. You need reports on cost to serve or cost of uh, goods sold, all those things. Uh, so uh, demo, Himanshu and Sandeep are going to do demo, but before that I'm going to set the stage. So we have uh, a simple network here. Uh, where like there are a couple of plants, uh, we crack the uh, raw material to get ethylene and catalyst, additives, all these things. Uh, we have these uh, three reactors in this plant, a uh, couple of them uh, high density polyethylene and uh, linear low density polyethylene which polymerizes uh, uh, ethylene. Uh, once you have the resin, the, the product is usually sold to, it can be sold to customer directly uh, in the rails or it can go to the terminal where uh, we transload it to the truck and sell it to customers. It can also go to the subcontractors where they are packaged into bags or boxes and then they are sold to the customer. Now in the demo we have a lot more products than what I have here but I just highlighted a couple of them so that you can follow it through the demo so just remember like 21, 22. And uh, the problem uh, we are going to solve in the demo is our demand is higher uh, than the supply. So that means I have to allocate um, uh, whatever supply I have to customers. I also need to produce it more efficiently or sometimes I have to rebuild. Uh, so all that uh, minimizing the transition to maximize my production capacity becomes important. Uh, so one last slide before uh, we go to the demo. Uh, this is the process we are going to follow. Uh, as you know, uh, SAP has this uh, uh, IBP, which is which are these different modules used for planning, and then we have S4 HANA used for execution. So we are going to use the demand module, the response and supply module, inventory module, and S4 HANA, and uh, we picked this particular uh, setup because it addresses most of the challenges we have, covers most of the challenges we have discussed. But um, each customer can have different requirements so they can pick and choose some of these modules. SAP is very flexible um, the way you can do planning. Also, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the, so, so for, for, uh, we are going to do this uh, uh, demo in uh, 2005, uh, but um, uh, 2008, which is coming out next week has a lot more uh, added capabilities from the integration point of view. So coming back to demo, uh, we have demand planning. Uh, we are going to get a consensus forecast at the SKU customer level. The reason we um, uh, we don't have notice that we don't have plant here, uh, 
So there are a couple of things because we don't want the sales guys to know which plan to source from. Also, it takes care of a lot of uh, realignment issues. Uh, then we move on to the tactical planning. Uh, here we have the, we do the time series uh, uh, optimizer solver. You can do rough cut planning. You can do all the simulations, everything. It's usually done in a uh, monthly bucket, uh, 12 to 18 month horizon, and uh, usually run once or twice a month. Uh, the other thing is we also model the customer in here. Uh, because uh, that's how we uh, we get this constraint forecast, and now also we also assign the plan to it. Uh, this is then uh, sent to the uh, order series, uh, where now we are in a operational window, um, which is tactical operational window, which is we can do daily, weekly buckets, uh, usually um, a shorter horizon, four to six months. Uh, also here, you have the option to either have customers or not have customers. In the demo, we are modeling customers here because we wanted to do forecast consumption at customer level. If that's not your requirement, you can just model this at SKU plant level and you will get much better performance from the solvers. So here we um, uh, generate these planned orders, purchase requisitions, uh, stock transfer orders, send it to S4. You can do deployment orders, which is short-term distribution and allocations and forecast. And then once in, once in S4, we do um, ATP allocations and schedule the orders uh, to minimize the transitions. And all these orders uh, and uh, other transaction data comes back to order series. Um, so um, we have some horizons where we actually uh, fix these scheduled orders, uh, then the horizon where we run the uh, scheduling and horizon where the order series uh, solver runs. Uh, but it's much, much deeper discussion, so I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, the reason being that these horizons can be different for different businesses. Uh, for example, for polymers, your orders can be more than a week long and uh, the product will can be uh, more than three months long. So those horizons can be, uh, you know, uh, it's obviously going to be different than anybody else, the other business where your orders are only uh, less than one day long. So we, you can contact us later if you want to discuss those things. Uh, also, I have here this uh, load building. This is in the roadmap for SAP. Um, and it, it will be in the transportation management module. Uh, that's why I have it in gray. Um, so if you have any questions on this process, again, you can we can talk after the presentation. Uh, or you can contact us later. And with this, I'm going to hand it over to Himanshu.